Are you a content creator who travels with your photo or video gear? If so, I've put together a few helpful tips in this tutorial that may save you a little hassle and heartache. Let's get into it. Hey everybody, what's going on? Chris from Flying Latin Media. Hope all of you are well in these crazy times and depending what channel of news you watch, we're either slowly getting back to normal or we're headed for more doom and gloom. I'll let you be the judge. In either case, you may find yourself getting back on an airplane after a long time away. And if your travels include bringing your camera gear along for the ride, I've put together my best tips on how to do so efficiently and safely. I currently travel well over 100,000 miles a year, oftentimes with all kinds of camera gear, so I know a thing or two about the process. The first tip is rather obvious, but force yourself to pare down what equipment you need to bring in the first place. The less you have to bring, the better. The golden rule I follow on any client shoot is what equipment will give me 90% of what I need, 90% of the time. The basic assumption we'll make here is that your camera bodies and your lenses will be carry-on baggage. Your heavier equipment like tripods and lights will be in your checked luggage. There are often no perfect solutions and it's realistic to think you will have to leave something at home. For this next tip, you'll need to decide how you're going to carry on your gear. There are multiple ways to do this and throughout the years we've used them all, from backpacks to sling bags to roller bags. Our latest favorite is the Pelican Air Series and the 1535 case. Together with the Trek Pack Organizer Kit, we find this is the perfect solution for safety, efficiency, and keeping things tidy when on set. For any heavier items that will go in your checked luggage, be aware there is often a weight limit. Before bringing gear to the airport, you'll want to check your local airline and find out what fees are associated with doing so. Oftentimes, exceeding the 50 pound weight limit can be extremely costly. On many occasions, I found it cheaper to ship the gear ahead of time to my destination via UPS or FedEx versus paying exorbitant fees on an airline to have yet another check bag. Currently, the cost to check in three bags on something like American Airlines, a popular US carrier, is 220 US dollars. So you may find it less expensive or the lesser of two evils to simply box up some heavy or bulky items and ship it UPS ground ahead of time to have it there upon your arrival. There may be better solutions to be found locally by renting the gear that you need versus bringing it along for the flight. If you travel in airplanes a lot, it is worth investing in TSA PreCheck. Not only will this expedite your time going through security, it will help you remain much more discreet when traveling with expensive gear. Prior to getting TSA Pre, it was not uncommon to have the security technician asking me to remove every bit from my camera bag for closer inspection. That said, TSA Pre is no guarantee, especially if you travel internationally. And depending on the airport, the person, and the day, you still may be subject to a secondary search. Be advised that TSA Pre means very little outside the United States. When traveling with gear in foreign countries, expect to go through security and be searched as would any other passenger. This next tip is awareness. When traveling with either carry-on or checked luggage, it's important to know what needs to go where. As this relates to a photo or video creator, a couple mistakes that I've ran into over the years, you'll want to avoid. For instance, all lithium ion batteries of any kind must travel in your carry-on bag. This includes drone batteries, camera batteries, monitor batteries, or even DTAP batteries. All of these types of lithium ion batteries must remain on your person throughout the entire flight. One such example of objects that should never go in your carry-on are multi-tools. These have become popular as of late with content creators as they help you easily build up your rig. Regardless of the fact there's no sharp or blunt object, on multiple occasions we've had our multi-tools confiscated at the airport only to never be returned. Discretion is important when traveling with camera gear. This next tip, don't advertise anything that you want to keep. Over the years, I've ran into other photographers in various airports, and they're easy to spot because many times they'll have Canon or 
Nikon, or RED stickers, or they'll have XYZ video production company plastered all over their gear. While I get the appeal of representing the brands that you love, or even marketing your company, you're also loudly advertising to everybody in the airport what you're most likely traveling with. This can be particularly dangerous when traveling to higher crime areas or foreign countries. Speaking of bad things happening to good people, these next two tips are combined. If you travel with any gear that you care about, I would highly recommend getting insurance. This is something I avoided or put off for many years, but now have peace of mind when I travel with camera equipment. There are many solutions out there on the market, and I'll put a link to the one that we used in the show notes, but the process couldn't be any more easy. I simply selected the type of gear that I have and the amount of coverage that we need, and the rest was hassle-free. In addition to the insurance, we also have peace of mind when traveling by using Apple AirTags. There's a few different equivalent products on the market, so find the one that works for you, but these products are amazing. These small RFID solutions allow anybody to quickly track where your bag is at any given time. If you travel enough, sooner or later you may arrive to your destination only to find that your bag didn't make the flight. Having precise ability at any given moment to know where your bag is will help you have peace of mind and may even help airport personnel track down your parcel and get it returned to you in a timely fashion. These last two tips are absolutely essential if you travel outside your home country. If you're traveling with camera equipment and you're being paid compensation for the work that you're doing, you'll definitely want to do your research before getting on a flight. The country you're visiting may require that you have a work visa in order to do the work that you plan on doing. There are exemptions to this rule so you'll want to do your research. Allowances are often made for tourists, students, and journalists. So if you're showing up to a country and doing any kind of commercial work, you'll want to have your story straight before you talk to any customs or immigration officers to best understand what type of visa you'll need to enter the country. The bottom line is to completely understand what the requirements are for the country that you're visiting. If you're being paid to shoot a wedding, or you're simply attending the wedding as a visitor, the difference between the two and how you explain this to customs officials can make the difference whether or not you're allowed into the country in the first place. This last tip has multiple benefits, and that's to keep a copy of a receipt in your favorite cloud platform, whether that be Google Drive or Dropbox or some equivalent thereof, of every piece of equipment that you own. And here's why. Some people when traveling to foreign countries will depart with little to no luggage. Once they're in the country they're visiting, they'll buy a brand new suitcase and load it up with brand new items such as clothing, electronics, iPhones, or even camera gear. Then upon returning home, they'll take their luggage full of brand new stuff and declare it as luggage that they brought from home in the first place, all to avoid taxes and duties. If a customs official suspects the camera gear you're carrying on may have been purchased during your visit, you may be required to prove that in fact you purchased it well before you traveled. Having these receipts available on your phone or tablet at a moment's notice can help you clear up any misunderstandings through customs or duties when coming back to your country of origin. And with that, we'll wrap up the video. Hopefully you learned something here, and if you think I missed anything, let me know in the comments below. As much as I travel for work, I'm always excited and eager to learn new things. I wish you well, safe travels, and I will see you in the next one.